A very good afternoon to you all. And uh, today we talk about 25 common Linux commands. So let's start with the first command, and this is going to be date. So let me take you to my Linux terminal, and then we keep coming back to the to the slide and to the Linux terminal as we discuss the commands. So this is my default Linux window, and you can see there is a tilde sign here and a hash, and here is the cursor where I can write, right? So we'll do the date command first. So as the name indicates, date command will give you the date for the day. So here you are, and uh, this is Wednesday, August 17, 14, 59, 18, Indian Standard Time, 2022, right? The next command that we see here is calendar or cal. So let me write here C-A-L, and this will give you the calendar. So for the month of August 2022, this is the calendar. And the current date today is 17th of August 2022. So the next command we see is what is known as clear. Clear is to clear the screen of what is written above it, right? So it will now give you a clear black screen where you can now start writing your commands again. So let's see how clear works out. So we go back to the Linux screen again. So we write clear here, C-L-E-A-R, and this clears the screen for you. Next, we see how you can use a Linux terminal as a basic calculator. So again, the command here is BC. So here you are, this is version 1.07.1, and you can do your basic calculations here. For example, five asterisk five, five, minus five, five raised to power two or three for that matter, right? Then 125 raised to power two again. So you can do all type of basic calculations using BC. And the way to come out of the basic calculator is by typing quit, Q-U-I-T. Here you are, right? So let's clear out the screen one more time before we go into the next command. So next we see a series of commands that allow you to uh, check where is, where is, which is the current directory where you're located. Also it allows you to change the directory and move to other directories. So let's have a look at these commands. So we'll look at PWD, we'll look at CD, and we'll look at LS. So now we talk of uh, a set of commands that help you move into the folders and subfolders of the system. So let's say we want to know which directory I am in as of now. So I'll say PWD of present working directory. The present working directory is MNTF. I'm in the F hard disk of my system. Uh, I have logged into Ubuntu. So in Ubuntu, you have this MNT folder into which your hard disk gets uh, uploaded. So therefore, this is F in MNT folder, right? So I can say LS. And LS will give you the names of files and folders that are present in this hard disk, F, right? So if you see here, LS. And here you are, you have your folders here and you have your files here, right? So if I were to show you in the actual system here, so this is my F drive here. This is my F drive. So these are the list of folders that you're seeing up there. And uh, let's say genome analysis, if you see, this is a folder here, genome analysis. And if you go back to the terminal, you should have a folder called genome analysis. So here you are, this one is genome analysis, right? So likewise, other files and everything are present here. Now let's say I want to get into a subfolder into this. So let's say you want to get into NGS folder, which is the simplest to type here. So I say CD and I say NGS. Right? So I'm into the NGS folder. If I want to see what are the contents of NGS folder, I can say LS. And if I want to see it in the long format, in the sense that I want to see also the size of folder and also the right permissions, then I can say LS minus L. So when I say LS minus L, these are the folders that are there here. Uh, these are mostly the uh, references or review papers that I have on NGS are present in this folder, right? Now, let's say I want to get back to the original F desk. So I can say CD dot dot. So double dot means I'm moving one folder up. Uh, from the child folder, I'm moving to the parent folder. So when I say CD dot dot, I come back to the top folder. I can again say LS minus L and here you are, right? And you can also see it has changed to F now, right? Instead of NGS, now it is F. That is one folder up. And uh, uh, you can say LS minus L, sorry for the typo. And you'll get your list of folders that are present in this folder here, right? Then, of course, uh, you can go back again and you can clear this thing. So you say C-L-E-A-R and you are cleared out of everything. 
So we have done CD, CD dot dot. And then of course we've also done uh, uh, ls and ls minus n, right? So ls will give you the names of the files and folders. ls minus l will give you further details of each file and folder. What are the right permissions? What is the size? And so on and so forth. So we started with checking the present working directory, and then we checked for cd or change directory. Then we talked of cd dot dot, which is to move to one folder up. And then we also talked of ls and ls minus l, which is to have a list of uh, folders and files in your current uh, directory that you are. And this also gives you additional information on when it was created and what is the size of the folder that you have. Then you could have ls minus a. If you want to see the hidden files and folders, you could do ls minus a. So here you are, ls minus a will also show you your hidden files and folders. So, so this one here is a hidden folder and this one is a hidden file dot dot. So these two are also now visible to you. Right, so let's clear this out and we talk more about other commands. So we now move on and we look at a command that can help you create a directory, which is known as mkdir, right? I remember we are in mntf, right? So if I want to create a new directory, I'll say mkdir. And uh, let's say I create a directory with uh, capital letters L I N X, the next underscore. C O M M A N D S like commands. And let's enter this. Right? So let me see if my F directory has Linux command folder or not. So I go to F and I refresh this. And you have this folder here, Linux commands. So now we move on and we talk a little more about how to populate your uh, folder. There is nothing in the folder as of now. So the next command that is there is what is known as touch. Touch is uh, basically to create an empty file in the folder. So let's uh, first move into the Linux uh, commands folder and then create a file with a certain file name. So we are still in F, so let me move into the Linux commands folder. So how do we move into a new folder? By saying CD, right? So we are moving into a subdirectory called Linux commands. So we say CD. And then I say L I N U X. And uh, if you press tab, it should take you there. So here you are. So now, if you see the path has changed, we are in MNTF Linux commands, right? And then I want to create a file, let's say out one. So I'll say T O U C H. Sorry. Remember, Linux is case sensitive. So you need to take care of the case. So you say touch and out one dot. TXT. Let's see if this file is created or not. So we move again to uh, our folder here, and there you are. This is out one. Uh, right now, there's nothing written here, so it is absolutely clear, right? If we want to copy a file from the F folder into the Linux commands. So the command is cp copy, and then we define the path. So we say mnt, and then we say F and in F we want to find a file sqsec1, right? And we want to transfer it to now Linux commands, right? So we define the path where we want to the file to go. It is mnt and then it is F and then it is lin Linux commands, right? And we enter the file is copied. There are already two files here. If you want to see the names of those files, you can say ls. And it will give you the names of the files. If you want to see the size or the content of these files, you can say ls minus l. It will give you the content of the file. And if you want to have it in human readable format, you can say ls minus lh. Right. So here you are. There are two files here, out1.txt. There is zero content here. This is zero KB in size. This is 5.0 KB in size and has some content. Right. So now we want to see the content that is there in sec1 so there, there are several commands that can give you the content in sec1 the first of which is cat right so you say cat seq1 and there you are it will take you to the end of the end of the file and it will give you the entire content of the file but uh, the default screen that will get us to the end of the file so what we want to also see is the start of the file so you can have some more commands that can help you do that so first of course is what is known as the more command m o r e and again, the file name, so this is seq1, right? And you enter again. So here you are, this is your sec1, and it will give you 
how much uh, of it has been has remained. So there is 48% more that remains. And you press enter, it will take you through the remaining of the 48% until it is completely loaded, right? So here you are, this is what you have, right? So this is your end of file. Right? Then there is a command for less and less. And again, the file name seq1 and you enter again. So this will also give you the file again and it will keep telling that there is something that is still left here. So you can press enter again. And uh, by the time you press keep it, uh, as long as you keep entering press, it will keep moving until the end of file, right? So if you see here, you come, you come to the end of the file and then you can see Q and you come out of the file now, right? So this is uh, the more and less command. More command will give you in percentage how much of the file is left. Less command will indicate that there is more to be read and as you press enter, it will keep scrolling down the file. Then if I want to only see a specific number of, uh, let's say I want to see only the head part of the file, so I can say head, H-E-A-T, and then the file name, S-E-Q-1, right? So I'll get uh, the first 10 lines. So let me first clear out and then show you so that it becomes clear. So let's now top of head, H-E-A-T, and file name. The file name is S-E-Q-1, right? So S-E-Q-1 and you say enter, and there you are. The first 10 lines of your file are visible to you. If you want to specify how many lines you want to see, you can do that as well. You say H-E-A-D minus N equals two, uh, and you can say, let's say 15 lines, and it's in 15, and then S-E-Q-1, right? And then you press enter. So clearly these are 15 lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right? So this is the, the uh, command to check for uh, head. Likewise, we also have a command for tail. Let me clear this out. So E, A, R, right? And you clear it out. And now you say tail and the file name again, sec one, right? So here you are, this is your tail, and you have two slash and characters here, so that gives you these extra lines, one and two. And if you want to, again, see, uh, define the number of lines you want to see at the tail, so you can say tail, T-A-I-L, tail minus N equals to, let's say, 20, and then the file name, S E two one, right? And you press enter. So you'll get 20 lines here, which include these two blank lines here. Right. So we've talked of uh, uh, we've talked of cat, which, which will give you the entire file and it will give you the tail view of the file if the file is too large. Then we've talked of uh, the more command, which will give you a certain percentage and the part of the file and it will tell you how much is remaining. Then we've talked of the less command. Then we've talked about head command and the tail command and you can customize head and tail to define how many lines you want to see from the start or from the end. Right? So we talked about cat. Right, then more, less, head, tail. Now let's see if you want to remove a directory, what is the command? So the command is rmdir. rmdir will only remove a directory if it is empty. If it is having content, it will not be able to remove the directory. So there, there is another command that you can use that is called rm minus rf. So remove iteratively and forcefully. So let me create another folder. Let's say it is called test one. So I say M M K D C I R test, right? Test one. Here you are. So you have your test one folder now. Let us see if it is created or not. And here you have your test one folder, right? So now if you want to remove the test one folder, you can directly say RMDIR and it will be able to remove it, right? So you can say RMDIR uh, test one and you press enter and your folder is gone. So let's uh, see this again. Let me just refresh this now. And you can see the folder is gone. RMDIR can be used only when the folder is empty. If the folder is not empty, then in that case, you have to say RM minus RF and then the name of the folder, right? So that will be food. remove uh, iteratively and forcefully the, uh, the whatever contents are there in the folder and then the folder itself, right? Then you can move a file from one folder to another folder. 
So here we have a file called marks and I want to move the marks file into the uh, our folder that is Linux commands, right? So if you go back here again, so I'll say MV and uh, then MNT and then uh, F and then M-A-R-K-S marks.txt and then I give the path for the folder again. So you have MNT F is the hard disk in which we are looking at, and then you're looking at LINUX Linux commands. Right? And the file is moved here, and you have your marks file here. If you look at the marks here, there are five students whose marks are given in English, math, and science. Right? Now we can have a look at what is the content of the file. So you could use either cat. So let's say cat, and uh, let's say uh, marks dot txt there you are you could have said head marks dot txt and you'd still get all the lines tail marks dot txt and likewise more marks dot txt more m o r e m a r k s marks dot txt and that would also work for you fine, absolutely fine, right? So let's clear this out. And uh, I hope it is clear how to make a file, move a file and create a file, right? So, so let me clear all of this. P L E A R. So next we look at, uh, let's say we want to print something to a file. We can do print uh, by two methods. One is echo, the other is print F echo and uh, enter so this gives me the same thing on the terminal right if i want to write it onto a file so we have two files here we have out1.txt so which is an empty file if you remember so let me write this out to the out1.txt so i say echo and i'm writing it to a file and i'm writing opening the file in append mode because the file is already open right so double greater than sign means that you're opening the file in append mode and you're going to write out to it. So you say out one dot txt and you press enter. Right. Now if you say more out one dot txt it should show you this is Dr. Vipin's static only classroom. Right. So this is written onto the file now and we can cross check here also if you go back here this is out one and here you have this is Dr. Williams by technology classroom right and you can also use print f to format your print so I say print f make it a little plural so as it does the aspect slash n slash n as a new line and then I say this is Right, um, let's say you say slash n for new line, and then you also print a few more addresses, right? So this is your formatting of the print that you're doing, and you're printing it on screen first. So you say on screen, and I say slash and I print. So now we have a clear, this is Dr. Wilkins by Technology Classroom on YouTube, and you have some sort of representation at the top. This is a slash n, so this begins at a new line, and then this is a slash n again. So these plots again come at the new line, and then you have a new line here as well, this one, last one. So the final path to the file and everything comes up here, right? And uh, if you want to write it to a file again, so let's say you write it to a new file, let's say out dot txt right and you press it right so you can say let's say cat and there you are those are dr weapons by technology classroom on youtube right so this is uh, how you can write into a file so we have talked of echo and we've talked of printf then we talk of grep and now we're looking at the file marks.txt, right? So let me just uh, say cat, M-A-R-K-S, marks.txt. 
okay you are this is your marks right okay. and uh, then if you want to know how many lines are there in the master txt you could say cat m-a-r-k-s dot txt and then you use a pipe so this is your pipe here pipe can be used to combine processes in linux right so we have done cat master txt and now we are trying to do trying to count how many lines are there so you say wc minus l and there you are right so it says there are six lines one two three four five and six right? so let's have a look at the file again so you say more and marks mark.txt there you are and now i want to look at the line that contains the name ria so i say grep D R E P Rep R I Y A. Yeah, and the file name that is M A R K S marks dot PXT. Here you are. So this shows up in red, and then you have the marks of print by and the three subjects are shown up here, right? So uh, grep has its own uh, utility and, and and a lot of switches that you can basically look at so that would demand a complete lecture in itself we'll do that in a later class so uh, but just to tell you that if you want to see what are the switches available with your main commands you can say man and the command name for example man grep right so this is basically the manual of grep is going to be shown to you here so this should show you a whole lot of things right so here you are this is your grep name this is grep e grep f grep r grep print lines that match a pattern. So in the in the previous example, we had given RIA as a pattern. It caught the line that contains RIA as a pattern. So grep searches for patterns in each file. Pattern is one or more patterns separated by new line characters. And grep points prints each line that matches the pattern. So this is basically what you do with grep here. And you can keep going if you want to go. And uh, if you want to quit, you can say Q or Q U I T for right? so you say quit and you are out of it right so for any command that you do uh, you can have this man page that will tell you what are the what is the function of the command and also the other switches that come with it for example man and let's say H E A T eight right so here you are head output the first part of the files and then the switches that are there minus C minus N if you remember, we had done minus n to change the number of lines that is, it was doing by default. By default, it will be 10, but you can change the number of lines that it shows by uh, giving a value to minus n. So minus n, and then with the space, you can say 6, so it will give you 6 lines, and so on and so forth, right? So this is just to give you a brief idea of uh, the commands that are there in, uh, in Linux. So DF is basically the disk usage or disk free, so you say DF say df and it will give you an idea of how much of the space is free for you right so this is used c here 95 percent is used d is 116 percent used e is 36 percent used and f is 74 percent used and there are other switches that can use a df command that give you more information which will be outside the purview of this lecture but will if time permits we'll do it again at some other point of time right so let's have a look at the commands that we've read today. So we looked at the 25 Linux commands today. First was date, then we looked at calendar, then the clear command to clear the screen, then the basic calculator or BC, then the present working directory, change directory, list or ls, ls minus l, ls minus a, ls minus lh. Then we did mkdir or make directory. We talked about touch, which is to create a new file. Then we talked about CP or copying a file. We talked about cat, which is to list the contents of a file. Then more and less and uh, head and tail are also part of listing the content of a file. Just that the, they're not listed completely. Head will print only the head part, first 10 lines. Tail will print only the tail part, the last 10 lines. If the file is less than 10 lines, then of course the entire file will be displayed. Then RMDR is to remove the directory. And then, of course, rm minus rf is to remove the directory, which also has content, so it is forcefully removed. Then you have move for mv, and then mv or move. Echo is to print. Printf is to print a formatted print. Grep is to identify a pattern and identify a line that contains that pattern. D 
DF is to check for disk space. And then finally, you have greater than and greater and, and greater than greater than. This is basically to write to a file. When you write to a new file, you use a greater than sign. When you write to a originally existing file, you use the double greater than sign, which is to basically open the file and append more. So on that note, we have discussed net five different common commands in, in Linux. Next, we'll talk about awk, which is a very handy uh, language for uh, you know for data analysis again and for uh, writing very short codes for specific purposes right so we'll talk of walk in the next lecture thank you very much